Ethel Payne. Braxton found himself in an office room with a bunch of matching desks. On top of each desk was a big brown keyboard that had a sheet of paper hanging out the top of it. Braxton hopped into a desk chair to get a closer look. He thought he had seen the contraption before, but couldn't remember what it was called. A typing machine, perhaps? Braxton pushed down on one of the keys and jumped back when he saw what happened next. The same letter jumped out of the typing machine and stamped itself onto the piece of paper. Braxton laughed at his loony <laughs> leap. He let a letter alarm him. Braxton pushed another key and another, then another. Clack, clack, clack. Characters climbed from the contraption and coded the page. Braxton wasn't ready for what happened next. The letters went from left to right, but when the letters made it to the end, the typing machine made a zipping noise and zoomed back to the left side of the paper. Braxton had seen nothing like it. He knew the machine must have been ancient. He figured it had to have come from the 1900s. His parents were born during those old days. They must know all about the typing machine. Clack, clack, clack. Braxton heard someone else hacking away at a typing machine. At the end of the row... Braxton saw a lady staring at her own sheet of paper. The paper slowly slid out of the machine like a slimy snake. The only time she stopped typing was when she put another sheet of paper into the machine. The lady really knew how to use a typing machine. Braxton mocked the miss by making his own mess with his makeshift memo. But once he took his token from the typing machine, his smile turned upside down. The sheet was bent. And it made no sense. Maybe he wasn't a token typist after all. Braxton slipped from his seat to see the lady's piece of paper. Braxton knew in no time that the lady had to be Ethel Payne. The same lady on the picture was on the door that he walked through. She didn't seem to notice Braxton. She only noticed the words she whammed and whipped on the paper. There was a stack of typed papers on her desk. Braxton had thought the typing machine was a typing machine, but the lady was the true typing machine. Next to the book, the lady had typed on her desk was a newspaper. The title of the paper read, The Chicago Defender. Braxton had never seen the newspaper before, but he knew that Chicago was a city somewhere. Ethel Payne quickly left her seat and rushed out of the door. Braxton knew he must follow her on her journey. Braxton ran out of the room without even thinking of what could be on the other side of the door. Behind the door was a room full of people with microphones, paper, pen, and tape recorders in their hands. It was a yell fest. The people yelled questions to a man wearing a suit and standing on a small stage. From all the yelling, the man would choose one question to answer. When he spoke, the entire room stopped. Silent. Behind the man on the stage, there was a sign behind his head that read, The White House. Right in front of the man was Ethel Payne. She had taken her place with the crowd before Braxton even noticed. She neatly noted her notepad before she quickly cut away from the room to go back to her typing machine. Ethel Payne didn't linger long because in a race with no one but herself, she darted out of the door again, this time to an army tank with soldiers. The servicemen talked and talked while Ethel Payne wrote and wrote. Soon after, Ethel Payne rushed back to her raging typing machine. A new stack of papers was created with her rumble. She finished her work and whipped back through the door. Braxton was getting tired from following her. This time, Ethel Payne was dressed all fancy at a function filled with fame. It seemed to Braxton that it must have been a very quick dream because in no time, Ethel Payne beamed at the sight of her typing machine. The giggles and snickers and fun were done now because Braxton had seen her write another one. The, the journalist, journalist. Ethel, Ethel Payne, Payne always, always remained, remained focused on her goals. goals. The voice from nowhere spoke again. Your, Your adventures, should you choose to accept it, is to, to see if you can, can do the same. same. Huh? Braxton looked around and noticed a walking trail behind him. Past what seemed like a football field away, there was a bright yellow sign that read, Your goal. Braxton smiled. This should be fun, he said aloud. Braxton was a really good runner. He had often raced his classmates, his friends, and his brother. No one had beat him yet. Braxton got in his starting position to dart to the glowing words when a railroad arm came down in front of him. Braxton stood, 
He scratched his head. That's not supposed to be there, he thought. Next to the arm appeared a small basket. Inside the basket was about half a dozen eggs. There's always things that slow you down when trying to reach your goal, Braxton heard the voice say. Let's see if you can remain focused with obstacles in your way. To Braxton, it sounded like a dare, and he never backed down from a dare. Just as he picked up the basket, the railroad arm lifted. Some obstacle, Braxton smirked. Braxton started his trot down the trail. The sign was in near sight, so he felt good about the goal. At next glance, a timer topped the sign with mere moments to go. Now he had to beat the time. Braxton rammed his run in rather high gear and scurried up the path. He was going, he was going, he was going, until in almost slow motion, he began to fall. A branch broke his brazen blaze through the beaten path. My eggs, Braxton exclaimed as he saw them roll on the ground. It was too late. Three had broken. Braxton was sinking into sadness, but soon saw the clock kept counting. He bundled the rest of the eggs back into the basket and galloped along the way. This time, he was careful to spot problems before they came. He waddled through a puddle. He swatted swarming flies. He hurtled over humps. It seemed as if he would make it. A gust of wind swooshed above his neck. Braxton didn't have time to look. He had to keep going. Two talons took flight with two eggs from Braxton's basket. No way, he yelled at the bird as his eggs flew away. With only one egg and simple seconds left, Braxton had to decide. I'll never reach my goal if I give up now. Braxton secured his single egg in the palm of his hand. He knew that no prey could pry it from him. It would not even slip from his hand should he fall. If he knew how to do one thing, it was run and run fast. With only one second left, Braxton found himself on the other side of his goal. He had made it with a lot less eggs than he started with, but he was proud that he had made it at all. Like Ethel Payne, no matter what happened, he stayed on his course. Congratulations, the voice from nowhere said. Your Your focus focus awards awards you the next next level. level. Braxton turned around to see if the voice was behind him, but all he saw were two doors. Which door would Braxton take? Carter G. Woodson, Althea Gibson,